Ms. Martin, if you would please give us your DOC, your full name and DOC number, please. Brittany Martin, 616639. Ms. Martin, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record, and then we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow those persons who wish to have input to, to, to speak. Uh, you have listed five, or there are listed on your list, five people who wish to speak. We only allow three people to speak. So I need you to, to decide who it is that you want uh, to speak. I'll tell you who's listed as speakers. Uh, Miss Etta Laparus, who is your grandmother, Mr. Cecil Laparus, who is your grandfather, Mary Paul, who is your daughter's grandmother, uh, Braylon Handy, who is your daughter, and Dimitre Moore, who is, uh, it does, I'm sorry, I don't have that relationship. So uh, who would, which of the five of them would you wish to speak? Um, Etta Laparus, uh, Dimitri C. Moore, and did you say Dale Eret? Uh Cecil Laparus, Mary Paul, or Braylon Handy? I, actually, I have my aunt here sitting here with me that I had thought I listed on there, Dale Eret. I'm sorry, her name is what? Dale Eret. I'll put her down here. Uh, Thank you. D-A-L-E-Y? D-A-L-E. L-I-R. D-A-L-E. And last name is Ray? Lee Red. And that's your aunt? Yes, sir. And she wishes to speak. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I've got I've got the speakers then. Okay. Uh, once we have the hearing, uh, you'll have an opportunity to say whatever it is you'd like to say to before the board, and then the board will vote. You understand our process. Yes, sir. This is the matter of Brittany L. Martin, DOC number 616-639, date of birth, November the 15th of 1991. She's a first-class felony offender. She is as the parole eligibility date of May the 24th of 2024. She has a full term date of August the 23rd of 2026. She is currently serving a 15-year sentence on the charges of forcible rape and extortion. Uh, her sentencing date was September the 30th of 2013. Ms. Martin, does that information sound accurate? Yes, sir. Uh, your case has been assigned to Ms. Pearl Wise. She will begin our interview process. Would you please answer any questions she might have? Good morning, Ms. Brittany. Good morning. How's it going? Uh, a little nervous, but I'm happy to be able to speak today. Good. That's that's that describes it well. Uh, for the record, how long have you served on this charge? Um, a little over twelve years. Okay. And how old are you today? Thirty-two years old. Thirty-two. Uh, I I want to spend a little time on the on the charge because uh, it's just a little confusing to me. How did a twelve-year-old happen to be in your home? Uh, she was friends of my cousin Regine, and how old she was how old she, was she, was age. she was the same age. She was actually oh. the same age, and um, I got a phone call one night that they were walking down the side of the road and needed a place to to stay. So I had went and picked them up and brought them home to my house. Okay, so this is the same night that all of this occurred. No, actually, I think. They lived in the home with me and my mother and my daughter for um, maybe a month. Um, they were going to school from my home. And then within that time, it had the uh, incident occurred. Okay. okay. How old was your child? Uh, she was she was a couple months old. Oh, okay. You had an infant. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you have an infant child in the home. Now, so the, was there any contact to their parents, Ray Jean, and which is your cousin? You know her. This other girl, not even related to y'all, she's a minor child. Nobody came and asked for no. No, actually, um, I think we did go to my aunt's house, Ray Jean's mother's house, but she's um also she was a drug addict and she just it was just a problem for her to take her. Okay. Because I, 
I mean, I knew I knew that it wasn't the best situation, me being a drug addict myself and also my mother. I knew it wasn't a good situation to have, you know, more to have. I couldn't raise any kids like that, you know, so I knew it wasn't the best idea, but I didn't really have a choice, I thought, to have them there. Okay. Well, at least with uh, at y'all house, they had a roof over their head. They had something to eat. They had, you said they were going to school, so they had some security. Yes. So you don't happen to know the story of why they happened to be walking down the street. But they saying. weren't. Well, they were. It was late at night, and it wasn't even a family member's home they were at. I don't even know. It was just someone ran home. I mean, I just wonder if they tell you the story of why they come to be walking in the middle of the night. No. And and they never share no idea. What, mm -mm. No idea. Okay. No idea. Uh, so you were 32. Uh, how old were you when this incident? So 12, it was 12 years ago. So you were 20. You were 20 19. with the 19. 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were 19 with this with a, a six-month-old child. And now you got the responsibility of, of two 12-year-olds. You and your mom both using drugs. What age did you yes. start using drugs? Um, I started using drugs when um, at the age of 14, when my grandmother died, who raised me, it was a traumatic event. I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. I'm so sorry for your loss. The, uh, the, um, what would you, what did you start using at 14? Um, alcohol, marijuana, stuff, stuff like that. So fast forward to 19, what were you using? Um, Opioids and cocaine. Um, where's your child now? She's with her. She's with her grandparents. Is she doing well? She's doing well. She's actually on Zoom watching. <laughs> good. That's good. Good. That's good. good. Was her grandparents on on her dad's side? Yes. Okay. Her dad was doing drugs as well, right? Did I read that? Uh yeah, he was in and out of jail a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, it's like I read that somewhere. Okay, so um, the thing that fascinated me about it, you helped me understand this. You guys didn't do that with 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 Reagan, your cousin, but you did it with the other little girl. And so that that speaks to that, you know that speaks to some loyalty, some sense of family to me. That's what it speaks to me. I might be reading too much into it. But uh, uh, go ahead. Well, actually, I did not place a phone call. I did not set anything up. I did have loyalty to my mother where I would, at that time, I had a sense of wanting her love and her affection and um, just her approval. I would have kept any secret for her. I would have. Good, good. Um, is, she, is your mother passed? She's in here. She's actually here at this facility. Okay, she's at this facility. She's there. Okay. Oh, it's the other guy. He's passed, right? Uh, I don't. You might not know this. Um, no. The guy that actually had sex with her that paid okay. the hundred dollars. Yeah, he's deceased. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm reading my the information they gave. <laughs> Uh, he he is deceased. That's that's where I got that from in my notes. Um, so tell us what you did do in this crime. Um, what, and I actually, I what, did not. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. I did not discourage it. I did not discourage it. I actually encouraged it. I held the secret and um. No, I'm talking about eventually... You were charged with rape and extortion. What did you do okay. with those crimes? Um. Well. Originally, whenever my mother made the phone call and set it up, I didn't say it was a bad idea. I was like, you know, do it like whatever. It wasn't it wasn't not normal in my household for that to go on. So something that would have been totally ridiculous in a normal household, it wasn't in mine. And it, it should have shooken me and it should have brought on some sense of uneasiness or this isn't right I, and I know I should have stopped it now but then it wasn't even a thought in my mind so I did and then um 
after the crime actually happened, after they left, I didn't go with, I didn't receive any payment, nothing. I didn't, you know, it wasn't my deal. But after that, then I did um, extort him for money. So uh, I can ask, you said there was normal in your household. So had you done that for your mom? Um, I hate to ask, but I just really wanted that on the record. So when you said that was normal in your household, that led me to think that. Um, I had a prostitute with um, men that my mother brought to the house. So sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry to hear that. That gives me perspective. Uh, that that helps, helps all of us to understand what we read in the report. Let's speak to your recovery and your healing now. Tell us what's going on now. Oh, Who are yeah. You? Thank you. So, obviously, I have a, a drug problem, and I am addicted to drugs. I am, and... Um, I have been in this STAR program for about, I think, two years, and I take now Traxone, and I attend NA meetings. So that has helped me a lot. And really, my motivation to just doing right is all that I've accomplished and all that I'm, I have a sense of worth now, I think, that just lets me know that I can do things and my life, like life is worth something. Whereas I didn't feel that then. Tell us about your education now. How much education did you have? Oh, I've done a lot. I've um, welding one, welding two, um, horticulture. I have five pesticides license, cabinetry, cabinetry installation, uh, IC3 digital um, certificate, and currently I'm in cosmetology. Wow, you've been in cosmetology since what, like uh, August? When did you start on? Started in May. May, May, okay. Mm -hmm. And you've also completed all phases of the sex offender treatment program. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you've done well. You have done well. Uh, have you taken trauma healing? I actually, I did take it. It's a five day class, and I had a trip. You can't miss any. So it's a five day trip, and on my last day, I had to go to the hospital for um, a back procedure. So I actually didn't complete it, but I am on the list to do it again. I think she said January, it's gonna start again. January, okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your write-ups. Uh, you had a contraband 715 of 21. What was that? Um, It was a dirty urine. And what was that? What was that? It was, that? It was heroin. Heroin. Because you got 60 days lockdown. When did you get out of lockdown? Uh, actually, they extended it to 90 days. I did 90 days and I got out in, in um, October. October this year? Mm, it's, uh, no, October 22, 21. <laughs> October 21. Okay. October 21. Okay. So um, let's speak to that. Well, what, was the, what was the growth from that? Definitely a turning point because I came in here. I came into prison that way and I just didn't want to be that person. And um, I just dove in. It just opened my eyes and I dove into recovery. That's when I started going to the NA meetings. That's when I knew I needed to get on the now track zone. That's when I knew that I didn't want to leave here with the same thought process, the th same addictions, the same problems. I didn't want to leave here the person I came. So I really let that be an eye opener and I let that be a turning point in my life. It made you realize you didn't have it like you thought you had it. Right. And before that, your writer was in 120 of 17. I mean, you had really been doing good. Yes. Yeah. So do you remember what, what was the trigger? What happened? The major you, um, I, you, I you, you, you know that was a decision. So I'm just trying to uh, understand the decision process. Yes, it was. It definitely was my choice. And I do know that it rippled on to other choices. And um, I just, and I really don't want to blame it on anything except for my addictive nature. But if I had to say what was going on at the time, I would probably say it was around COVID maybe and 
but I really don't want to put it on anything except for myself, really, because it's just, it's in me. I know it's in me to use. And uh, the temptation got the best of you. That's what you're saying? I would think. But you, you know, but you also know that you're a rational thinking human being. So, it, you know, so that's that's why I want to know, because once you become aware of that, when that comes around again, and it will come around again. Yeah. Well, okay. um, which is I, when Miss Maya, who was over the STAR program at the time, when that happened and I got out, I literally ran her down every time I seen her because I just knew that I needed, I needed help. And finally, one day she was like, come on the class. And I, mm -hmm. I guess she saw my persistence with it and she knew that I wanted it. I needed it. I was calling out for help, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. So she put me in and it's been a, it's probably the best class that I've taken here besides my educational courses. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you do every day now at the prison? Uh, well, um. I go to school for cosmetology and um, I do a lot of painting and I do a lot of sewing. Um, basically, it just work, <laughs> just keep my mind busy and keep focused. Okay. Good. Uh, and then you do have high needs because of the substance abuse. So tell me uh, if you're successful today, where would you live and how would you support yourself? Um, actually, I would live with my aunt who's here and uh, she has her place. She, her and my sister live together and um, they're supportive of me coming home. My grandparents own a business and they are willing to let me work upon being released until or in the process of me putting out applications for jobs because I really want to do something probably in the welding field. And um, I just know that with my crime, things aren't going to be easy, but I think that Welding is a job that I would be able to secure a spot in. Well, that's good. That's all I had. Uh, thank you for asking my questions. Uh, Warden, what you want to tell us about this young lady? Well, she has a lot of classes, and with her crime, she wasn't even taking them to get any type of credits. So she has stayed busy doing those classes and that coursework. Um, also, she helps out. She does a lot of art projects for us as well as she's um, involved in hobby craft. So she's really creative doing different art projects. She was younger when she first got into prison. And for as young as she was, she has fewer write-ups than you would expect for her being so young. And she has been doing well with her classes, going, taking the nail tracks on. Um, so she's been on a positive path. Uh, do you have any uh, art projects there that we can look at today? Did you bring anything to show us? Uh, what about the auction there? I sent some stuff. To, aren't they doing an auction? Um, oh, that's okay. I was curious. Did you bring anything? <laughs> we can try to get a few photos, but she does really well. She's very creative. She does mm -hmm. backdrops and banners and um, any of the little programs that we have or, you know, the, the fender-led programs. She's creative on having those. Great, great. That's a big, that's a good skill. You can definitely make some, some money off that when you get out. I'll tell you. All right. Thank, thank you for asking my question, Chairman. That's all I have. Uh, now we'll hear from uh, your grandmother, Miss Etta Laparus. Myself. I think you're still on mute, ma'am. He doesn't know how to do it. I have it. There now you go. Can hear yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, for Brittany, um, I would just like to say that I think she's done wonderful. And I thank God every day that she's she's been there because I think that helped her get through everything she's been through because she's been through enough that I don't know how anyone survived all she's been through. Uh, and I think she uh, she's going to do really well if she can get out and get out and, and work and 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 think positive on everything. And that's what she does. She really does think positive. And she has a daughter and we're willing to let her work with us and, uh, you know, 
lead her with anything she needs to be led with. You know, I mean, just just make sure she does the right things. And she's she's a good person, really good person. Just had a bad start at life, and and she she's doing better, a hundred percent better. So I I think she she'll be great. Good. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now you. we're here from uh, Miss uh, from Demetra Moore. Um, first, I'd like to give honor to God, who is my Lord and Savior. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Brittany when she first came. I was like her first roommate. I was a peer minister, and a lot of the issues that Brittany had, I know about them because she confided me, and I want to say that I planted the seed of her getting, of her trying to sort out the trauma that was going on, trying to get to the root. I mean, her her life was, she grew up in a dysfunctional household. Mm -hmm. uh, when I met her, she was on drugs. She was strung out on drugs. But something I said to her and just listening to her made her want to change her life. Um, I recently just re got released from prison on March 31st. My sentence was vacated. Um, and I spent 25 years in LCIW. Um, like I said, I'm a peer minister, um, so I will be there also to show her, to have that support with her, along with her family. I feel like Brittany is my grandchild because I look at Brittany as my daughter. I have two young daughters, and I took her under my wing as my child. And she's not the person, she's not that child that came to prison. Um, she has direction in her life. She's taken, she didn't have the self-worth. And with the help of her grandparents, with the help of her uh, aunt, they have instilled in her. Um, I helped her try to work on a relationship with her parent um, that's still rocky, but she was willing to try. Um, and she just, and I know it's hard because I have drug addicts in my family. I never was on drugs, but for her to just confide in me and say that she wanted to change, but she didn't have direction. She didn't know where to begin. She didn't know, and I walked with her through that. And I'm willing to walk with her through that now. I'm currently working at WTAA Engineers. I work with WT Winfield um, here in Baton Rouge, and I went, also went through the parole project. So the parole project helped me transition. And with the skills and knowledge that they gave me, I will be willing to be her mentor. I will be willing to be there for her and guide her every step of the way through her um transition. So I'm asking the board to please um if you can find it in your heart to grant her release today, I will personally see that she gets the mentorship that she needs because I'm also a trainer. So uh, I was trained for the um as a peer mentor also. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now we hear from uh Ms. Lorray. Lorray? Yes. Okay, my name is Dale Lorette, and uh, I'm one who helped raise Brittany. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk, but I'm very proud of Brittany. She didn't just lolly around when she came here. She got up, faced it. She got into classes, and now she's doing what, and I think she can do well for herself. The peer mentor is. Excuse us. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Miss Lorette, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Did, yes. you <laughs> did you hear her? Or did you hear No. Yes, you we did. I, I... Okay. That's a blessing. <laughs> we multitask all the time. Yeah, we're trying we to do it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma I, I heard you say that you were proud of the classes that she's been in since she's been How she's got to it bitter. She got up and you know got to work and took classes and she's still in them and she's got you know she, I think she'll do well. She'll do really well. I just wanted you to know we heard you. That's, that's why I was repeating that. We heard you. Ms. Martin, is there anything you'd like to say before the board votes? Um. Yes. Um. 
uh, just thank you for this opportunity, opportunity, basically, and also that when I was at home before this prison sentence, I was just existing, and I had no drive and no motivation, and I know that if I go into society today or tomorrow that I wouldn't be existing, that I would be living it, and I think that um, I'm strong enough now to get through and to 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 stay to to put my irrational thoughts aside and to push through and to do better for myself. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Panel raise the vote. Yeah, I have a few more questions for I vote. How much longer do you have in the cosmetology program to complete that? Um, I should have my hours finished in uh I think April. Oh, April. Okay, well, you're, okay. Your, your PED day is 524. But you get some good time for that. Which, I would, I would, oh, get, no good time. Yeah. Okay. So, so you just finished that in April, so that's that's great. Uh, is there any way, Warden, you can add? Y'all already got on the waiting list for trauma healing. So she, 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 could she do that simultaneously with uh, cosmetology and finishing that up? She should be able to. We'll work with those two departments. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, Brittany. I um um I I thank you for your honesty today and your candidness. I know this was hard. Uh, I, I'm I'm looking at your daughter. She's a beautiful young lady. It's thank beautiful. you. And y'all favor. Y'all really do favor. Yes. Not just the color of hair, but y'all y'all favor. Y'all really do. And and I, I I hear you didn't say it out loud, but I hear a determination for you to give your daughter a different life from what you had. Exactly. Uh, I, I do want you to know that forgiveness is healing. Everything from fourteen to nineteen, all of that, put it on a, on a plate of forgiveness. That's where your healing is going to come from. So that you won't. Uh, what they say that uh, if you don't if you don't heal, you'll bleed on folks that didn't cut you. And I don't want you to be bleeding on your daughter because of what happened to you from 14 and 19. That's why I'm saying that. Uh, I, I'm inclined to take a chance on you. Um, uh, you uh, my vote is to grant uh, after you complete but your, your parole, after you complete the cosmetology program and after you complete um, trauma healing prior to your release uh, and that you um, attend AANA three times a week and that you submit to the mentorship of Ms. Moore. Cooperate with that mentorship. That means that when she calls you, you need to answer. Absolutely. Have a chance. Don't make it hard on her. I'm asking you to submit to her mentor, her peer mentorship for the entire period of parole. Yes, ma'am. If that ends, just talk with your parole officer. If she's unable to fulfill it for whatever reason, get with probation and parole and let them know that you don't have a mentor anymore. You got a lot. Okay. You have you have a lot going on. Um, so that is my vote. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Okay. Ross, Mr. Freeman. Um, due to the amount of time that you've served and all the classes you've taken, and the fact that I think you need supervision when you get out, if we let you sit there to your full term date. You would just get out and go register with the sheriff's office, and that'll be it. This way, you'll be under supervision. Uh, we can make sure you attend the classes you need for sex offender treatment, as well as get anything else you need. So, my vote is to grant today. Thank you, uh, Ms. Martin. I, I've, I've listened very closely to your interview today. Uh, it, it, it seems to me, uh, as oftentimes we're able to see, that uh, the Department of Corrections really has programs that help people. And it certainly appears to me that your life is much better now than it was when you first came to prison. And that's not only the Department of Corrections has done that, you've done the hard work to get yourself there. And uh, should be commended for that. So my vote, likewise, would be to say the same. Uh, conditional grant that you, uh, you you need to complete your cosmetology course as well as the trauma healing course. Once you complete those programs, you'll be released uh, to uh, conditions of three AA meetings per week, 
uh, as well as the mentorship of Ms. Dimitri Moore. Now, I know Ms. Sheremy is here today. Are you going to the parole project? Is she going with the parole project? Yes. Are y'all involved with her at all? Okay. We're not here. okay. So your parole has been granted. Uh, good luck to you conditionally upon your completing those two programs. So good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome.